Today on episode 19 of SpaceX in the News, we have a ton to talk about. Elon just went on a total Twitter rampage about an hour ago, so we're going to go through some of the information he shared with us, almost all of which concerns Starship and Super Heavy. We'll also talk about Starhopper, the test vehicle for Starship and Super Heavy. A lot of exciting things happening down in Boca Chica right now concerning that. We'll talk about some NASA space money and the potential for SpaceX to grab some of that. Then we'll move on to the upcoming launches and we'll finish out with today's honorable mention. Let's get started. So when I last left you guys, we were all anxiously waiting for the first Raptor engine that made its way down to Boca Chica to be installed on the bottom of Starhopper. Well, I've got good news for you. That has officially happened. The Raptor engine was rolled out to Hopper just a few days ago, and the locals got some pretty good pictures of its installment. They also got some pretty good footage of the fuel lines that are hooked up to Starhopper. Everything has been progressing so fast for Starhopper these last few weeks. Local news stations have been out there covering this. Articles have been written concerning road closures. The local sheriff's office has dropped off notices to local residents concerning these closures, and have also set up barricades and checkpoints. Boca Chica Maria told me that Stargate has been packed full of cars these last few days, and literally the smell of fuel is in the air. My pal Austin Barnard tweeted out, Do y'all think SpaceX will attempt some sort of test with only one Raptor engine or wait for the other two to arrive? It's honestly been boggling my mind. And Elon Musk himself tweeted back, First, really short hops with one engine, and then suborbital flights with three. Congratulations, Austin. I'm sure that came as a pleasant surprise to see that Elon tweeted you directly. So yes, as soon as the other two Raptor engines arrive at Boca Chica, then Starhopper will make its suborbital flights. Until that time, Starhopper will make do with just one Raptor engine and will be tethered to the launch pad as it makes its hmm, couple meter hops. When asked if these little baby hops will happen this week, Elon responded, hopefully, always many issues integrating engine and stage. First hops will lift off, but only barely. And when asked if he was worried if any damage would happen to Starhopper because they don't have a flame trench or a flame bucket, Elon kind of nonchalantly tweeted, yeah, it might break. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it was made by a water tower company. It's not that expensive. Concerning those other pieces of Starhopper, we now know what those are. And they're not for the hopper that's being fueled up on the launch pad right now. That hopper is complete and ready to go. Elon tweeted that they decided to skip building a new nose cone for the hopper after the last one was destroyed when it was tipped over by the wind. But these pieces we see them working on now are for the next Starhopper the orbital Starship vehicle. Elon is not wasting any time, guys. He's got several vehicles being built at once. All right, so let's transition into Starship now, the actual vehicle that will take humans to the moon and Mars one day. Elon just shared a video of the testing being done on the new heat shield. And yes, I say new heat shield because SpaceX has apparently decided to use hexagonal heat shield tiles. So what happened to the perspiring, sweaty heat shield they were going with a few months back? Well, when asked about it, he said they will still have this transpiration cooling system, but only on some of the hottest sections of the heat shield. And it sounds like he knows what he's doing because when asked if the heat shield passed the test, he replied yes in full duration. Now, last thing concerning Starship and Super Heavy. On February 7th, and then again a couple weeks later on February 23rd, I informed you guys that SpaceX will be building Starship and Super Heavy both at Boca Chica, Texas, and Cape Kennedy. Well, that has now been confirmed by Elon himself. He tweeted that they're working on regulatory approval for both Boca Chica, Texas, and Cape Kennedy, Florida for Starship and Super Heavy launches, but also will be building Starship and Super Heavy simultaneously in both locations. You heard it here first, guys. My subscribers are in the know. I mean, just look at all these people who responded in shock. If you're not a subscriber yet, you need to hit that button right now and also hit that notification bell so you don't miss any information. This is the place to be. All right, so it looks like there might be more good news heading SpaceX's way. The new White House budget proposal has scrapped all funding for future versions of NASA's SLS rocket. Furthermore, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine plans to increase the use of commercial partnerships to accelerate the White House's plans. It's been said that SpaceX has already sent an unsolicited proposal to NASA to fly the Orion capsule on their rockets. Of course, SpaceX would be competing with ULA's rockets like the Delta Heavy. But what do you guys think about this? Do you consider the impending demise of the SLS program a good thing or a bad thing? Between you and me, I, I honestly don't think it could come quick enough. I've said for a long time that the SLS rocket, as cool as it is, just, it's a waste of money. It's not reusable, it's cost billions of dollars, and it's been delayed for years now. I say give that money to SpaceX and watch what they can do with it. And guys, I don't hate NASA. I'm a huge fan of the Saturn V, but those are days gone. This is the new age. And sure, NASA can still build cool things like landers, but I think, and I know Jim Bridenstein does as well, that it's time for private companies to take the reins on rockets. And if you disagree, that is totally fine. Talk about it down in the comments. But let's really quick talk about some upcoming SpaceX launches. Some good news, Falcon Heavy finally has a launch date of April 7th. This is, of course, after many months of delays. And then later next month, SpaceX will be launching Starlink 1, the first official satellites of their Starlink Constellation project. So that's really cool. And then we have CRS-17, a cargo mission to the International Space Station. And some of you asked me to apply to NASA's social event for this launch, where I would go down to Cape Kennedy and kind of 
do a behind the scenes tour and actually get to watch this launch. And uh, I told, I said it was during the school year and I probably wouldn't be able to, but you know, I applied anyway. So just so you guys know, I did apply for this and I'll let you know if it does come through or not. Regardless, I do plan on being at the Demo 2 flight for Crew Dragon when we take American astronauts back to space on American rockets. The future is awesome. All right, let's finish this up with today's honorable mention. This one's for all my subscribers in the UK. Britain's air breathing rocket engines are set for key tests. That's right, air breathing engines. So this is how it works. Like a jet engine with intake that can suck in air from the atmosphere and use it as its oxidizer to burn its fuel, the Sabre engine can push a vehicle into the upper regions of the atmosphere where the oxygen gets thinner, where it will then convert into a fully liquid fueled rocket engine. So it's kind of like Virgin Galactic's idea where a rocket ship rides underneath an airplane to a certain altitude and then drops away and lights its rocket engines going up into space. But instead of using just two vehicles, this Sabre engine allows for just one vehicle to do both. And if the UK based company Reaction Engines can pull this off, it could be a game changer for the industry. The times we live in guys, the times we live in. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not a subscriber yet, again, I highly, highly recommend it. Best decision you'll ever make, but then again, I'm a little biased. In our next episode, number 20, we may very well see the Starhopper finally light its engine. Until that time, Godspeed.